Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for Dinner Hay as part of their custom monthly music review. And if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on the screen from an act named Hikaru Utada who I have reviewed before and I do typically enjoy Hikaru Utada's work. And we're going to be listening through this track, play a love song from start to finish and we're going to hear what we think. And uh, we also have lyrics as well, so let's go. Let's do it. Really pretty with the senses coming in like this. Nice double time with the progression. But though the mix has just been so clean so far, I really dig it. I adore how bright and fluffy it sounds. I adore a little bit of ornamentation and flexing a vocal technique on, uh, on the singer's part. What I will give is like that, like that, that cute little da 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 da, whatever that little cute little kind of synth there that sounds like a music box. That's a fun lead synth. I think that what I like about Hikaru's music is that they tend to find um, really interesting song textures that might not necessarily be totally typical, and it helps to make their music more distinct and unique. The tightness of the drums are welcome too, I think. Great, adjustment. Minor focus here. What I like about the fact we switched to a minor here is that a lot of the time with a lot of contemporary music, you'll just get someone just sticking in the major for the entire time. And it's like, oh, I get it. But like, it's nice that it sounds nice, but I want there to be a bit of drama. And when we're talking about hold me tight and don't let go, don't let go, it's almost like because it's minor, we're afraid that the person is going to let go. And this kind of drum part where it like leaves without an answer, you don't get that resolution, is almost like you're waiting for that person to figure out if they're going to commit or not. It's symbolic of what's going on with the lyrics. It's very smart. Great use of choir as well, actually. It's very uplifting, isn't it? Mm. 
smashed it, man. Honestly, like, I don't... I, I really like this one. I really like it. I think this is a really fantastic track from Akaru Utada. There's just the right amount of instrumental development throughout for me to really sort of appreciate and give it a good good old thumbs up, um, as well as a lot of other things. We're going to find out more in the lyrics section. So we've got the lyrics here. Play a love song. When I've been hurt, I quietly reflect alone. You who reads too much into things fights with uneasiness. Hold me tight and don't let go. Oh, okay. There was no ulterior motive. So she's thinking about appearance as well, you know. I don't know since when my parents have been like that. So, like, she's comparing the situation I have to her parents and stuff like that. Let's eat and sleep and laugh. Can we play a love song? Come to my side. Let Hold me tight and don't let me go. Yeah, okay. I think I understand this one. Please hear me. Let me hear you say you like me. Can we play a love song? That's a pretty thing to end a song with. And welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from an ex named Hikaru Utada titled Play a Love Song. Now, I think this is a really great song. It, Hikaru has done a splendid job of telling a story, which I think most people will be able to sort of access and relate to, but they've done it in a way where it just doesn't seem generic and forced and, you know, like they're just, I don't know, they're just slapping something out there for the sake of making a few sort of X amount of thousand or million sales, right? They've got a song here where I think that Hikaru is just genuinely wanting to have a conversation with whoever they wrote it about, and it seems very authentic. And it's like they, again, they're talking about their parents and stuff like that. They're looking at their own life, they're bringing stuff in that might not necessarily be conventional. They just want to end that winter with a smile. They just want to know if that person will like them or love them for who they are, you know? I think that's a beautiful thing. And I, I, it just seems like we're onto a winner here with the subject matter as well as how the story is told. But it's just in addition to that, the fact that with this track, we not only had a car in the center, as well as some backing parts as well on the sides. We also had like a full blown choir for the whole spirituality sort of uplifting sort of aesthetic. And we really just seemed like we had a sense of hope about it. And even though in that interlude, things got a bit minorish in the harmonies for a moment, it was like, hey, you know, this is just a temporary thing. We're back up, things rise, we've got ourselves back up and we're looking forward to seeing what, what the answer is gonna be from this person that we have our interest on. They, they just want to be held. I think that that's a beautiful thing to talk about. It's a great song. It's a great song. Akara's voice, as per usual, that their voice is stunning. Great controller head chest voice there. A little bit more sort of like a exploration, I think, here with the t melodic tales, the phrasing there on the ends of those. I really appreciate the fact we aren't just sort of sitting there and letting the main sort of um, hook and verse parts just remain kind of stagnant and safe. We're exploring our head voice and going up into that range a little bit, as well as having some really intriguing harmony ideas there that work well with the synths, piano, the bass, the drums, and all other sort of elements within the arrangement. Ultimately, the hook is catchy, and I think it's not just because of the main vocals, but the combination of them plus everything else. And I'm very satisfied overall with the way it was performed emotively. It, you know, as I said, it seems like Hikaru Utada really cared about what they were singing about. And uh, that's that's what you need in this trial. You need this to be genuine. You can't, can't kind of pull this off if you don't care about it. You know what I mean? It just won't seem real. The track at 4 minutes 12 is outside of the 2 to 4 minute sweet spot that I have for tracks. But I think that it's still well fleshed out and very kind of interesting to listen to. We had... Uh, lots of different con like we had verses and choruses and stuff like that as well as an interlude section we had enough time for the instruments to stand on their own i think the main ones being the bass drums the synths and the keys so if i talk about those for a little bit i think that the keys were kind of low key we had a mid-range resonance there where i think they were sort of meant to sig harmonically or frequency wise underneath those mid to high range synths there but i think that was a smart move it's like we got a very humble key performance here where we were, had a sense of groove with the 8th and 16th notes on the left and right hands, but it was also like it wasn't overwhelming and it was meant to be a very smooth experience. 
The synths that I was talking about before, they sparkled and they had this interesting kind of thin tone. It was sort of a magic, like a spark, and it was something that fizzled and sort of swirled around what Hikaru was doing in the center really elegantly. It segged nicely in regards to the frequency spectrum on top of the key parts there and wasn't arguing at all with the bass and drums. And just it was just a fun sort of unique tone that I really appreciate. It was it stood out as an alternate synth lead, even though it did never. It took the focal the focus away from Hikaru to those vocals. I think that the bass in this was great. It was very kind of like um well tempered and well controlled but you could hear there was a resonance in that low end there it was nice and full sounding because of that because things were niched well in the high mids and lows and just yeah in general basically what we had here was a great sort of attention to detail was sticking with um the chord progressions that were present even though we didn't have a whole lot of change with those but we didn't necessarily need to i think the theme was strong as it was um, it looped nicely into itself and had a lot of glow to it, a really healthy glow to it. But yeah, the bass did what it needed to do to support. The drums, when they came in, had a great sense of punch. The actual sounds of the drums were nice outside of the post-production. They were peppy and full of spice, but not too much at the same time. They were contemporary, but it sort of simultaneously, like, um, they felt like gave you a sense of nostalgia, I think. It kind of reminded me a lot of the early kind of 2010s kind of production there with dum da dum da dum, dum kind of stuff if i'm not mistaken if i just go back a little bit oh no there's a variation so there was some variation with the different sort of like kind of ghost note kicks which i appreciate because even if you got the focus on the chord note position moving yourself forward it's it's good to have sub layers and variations with those parts to make sure that the percussion is intriguing especially if you've got the keys being consistent with the bass and the synths you know what i mean but yeah no uh, not a note out of place with the rhythm there we had moments where it was kind of like not there and then things would float and then it bring them back in etc and it was nice to also have that build back into that final chorus part eh, as a bit of a sort of a pseudo crescendo thing you know the theme overall was well i think it was nice and positive and happy uplifting with the use of those minor chords circling back so major chords should i say circling back into the majors we kind of go down a little bit and then back up as if we're constantly trying to sort of maintain equilibrium there because of the brightness and glow of the various elements there and how none of there's no weird sort of intervals or weird kind of icky bits there there's no bad no choices what i mean by bad no choices is nothing that sounds sort of gross or egregious it sticks within the natural major minor scales really nicely without any sort of dissonance there and melodically or harmonically and uh just generally it's just really pleasant and i think for this kind of stuff i think you kind of want that aesthetic to roll i've said aesthetic a lot today you want that kind of sound that feel to work well when you've got the lyrics and the vocal performances they are and so i think ultimately they're very well connected the studio recording mixing and mastering was commercial grade Vocals had a great sense of presence to them as well as some of the backing parts, the call and responses and the choirs, there are sub layers. The uh, same with the pianos, the bass, drums and synths as I mentioned, I think the piano, a little bit of the high end was taken out to let the synths glow on top. That's just really good EQing and engineering there with the mixing stuff. Things are nice and wide in the stereo field as well, things surrounded, I think a few things moved around. But, but um, it was mostly sort of static with things reappearing and then coming back, etc. It was more of a, oh, there's new things here. Oh, they're taking them. Oh, they come back. That's the kind of indication I got from it. It was nonetheless interesting to listen to in part because of the fact that it was just a really well recorded vocal performance there. It seemed like they just did, got a really good take there across the board. And uh, there was, you know, there was dynamic range to it as well. Things went the same loudness all the time. There was a bit of range there. And uh, yeah, it was nice to have without pumping still, so bus compression limiting was handled. I mean, effectively, this is my review this of this track from an actor named Takaru Utada, titled Play a Love Song, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show them some love via their various social medias and Spotify page, and stay cool, and stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time, as they need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, and I'll catch you in the next SV Patrons video. Spider Hands out. <laughs>